Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of the Dubai Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host Tahir Majithia and in today's episode, we're going to talk all about mortgages and for that, I have a very dear friend, Amit Nainani, who's the Director of Sales from Lion Mortgages, a leading mortgage consultant in the UAE where I'm going to be discussing all things about mortgages. So if you're looking at taking a mortgage in the UAE, uh, buying a property in Dubai on a mortgage or want to know more, this episode is definitely going to be great for you. But before we go ahead, if you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the notification bell to stay updated. Your likes and comments are really appreciated. If you're listening to this on Spotify, please do follow us. And if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, please do give us a five-star rating and review. This really helps us getting discovered. Now let's cue the music. Hi Amit, how are you? Hi Tahir, thank you for having me on board. <laughs> Thanks All for good. coming. Thanks for coming. Uh, Amit, uh, if you could just introduce yourself. Uh, I know you very well, but if you could introduce yourself as to the audience, what exactly you do. and Just to give you a background, I've been in UAE for last 19 years. Initial 17 years, I was working with the banks in UAE. Wow. And since last two years, I've been working with Lion Mortgage and I manage their sales team. Right. So Amit, now there are a lot of questions. A lot of people have different questions and, uh, you know, because in general, a lot of people in Dubai buy properties, uh, you know, they're all a lot of overseas investors where people, uh, you know, uh, want to know a lot about mortgages. So first of all, uh, first question to you is, how does the mortgages work in uh, Dubai when they want to buy a property? Uh, you know, can they take a mortgage for an off-plan property, ready property? How does in general mortgages work? The majority of the people take mortgages on a freehold ready property. Okay. It could be a leasehold property or a freehold property based across any of the Emirates here. Okay. And they get mortgage on that. Right. Their eligibility depends on their income documents, what they provide. There right. could be either a resident who's based in UAE or a non-resident who can avail a mortgage. Right. Okay. Now, if, uh, you know, let's talk about the residents, right? Okay. Uh, residents, what is the percentage of mortgage a resident can get in Dubai and for how long that loan can be? Residents can get up to 84% if the property value is less than 5 million. Okay. If it's above 5 million, then it's 73% that okay. they can borrow on the first property. Right. The consecutive one will be 60% financed by the banks. By the banks. Yeah. Okay. And for how long does this loan or... Uh, the loan you know? tenor is primarily maximum 25 years for a salary till they turn 65 years of age, for a self-employed till they turn 70. Okay, so basically if someone is, say, 50 years of age and is salaried, he's going to get a 10-year loan. 15 years. 15 years Till he turns 65. Till yeah. he turns 65. And uh, if it is a self-employed, then 25 years. Correct. Till it's, uh, I mean, That's till he the turns 75. That's, yeah. the That's the maximum cap. That's the maximum cap. That's the maximum cap. Yeah. Okay. And what, uh, you know, uh, what is the difference between you know, when it comes to the eligibility criteria for a salaried or a self-employed, uh, how does it work? See, the calculation parameters are different. For a salaried, they look at the fixed salary that he's drawing from his employer right. and they look at his liabilities. So there's right. something called as a dead burden ratio. Right. That's called DBR, DBR, which is calculated for every individual when he's approaching a bank for any kind of borrowing, okay. whether it's a mortgage, credit card or a personal loan. So for a salaried, it depends on his salary. Right. For a self-employed, they look at the company profits that he's getting and the share that is being passed on to him. There could be okay. three partners, what is the share of the applicant on that they derive his eligibility? Okay. But self-employed and salaried both are eligible for a mortgage. Correct, correct. Both right. are eligible. Now, okay. So this is for basically, uh, you know, uh, people living in the UAE, which is expats who are residents and have, uh, you know, uh, are drawing a salary here or have a business here. What about non-residents? People, because there are a lot of people who buy properties in Dubai who don't live in Dubai. That's also available. The bank does up to 60% financing okay. for them as well. They yeah. look at their home country documents. So let's assume you're based in UK. They would ask for your personal account based in UK, right. your utility bill just to prove you're actually staying in UK right. and a passport copy and they can do the loan. Okay. And how, how long does this loan process take for a non-resident? A pre-approval takes time because for a non-resident, they take a compliance approval. So okay. assume 15 day period is given to take a pre-approval. Right. The whole execution of completion could take one and a half month to one month, depending on his paperwork. Okay. And the same time for the resident? Resident can be done in three weeks as well because okay. he has an Emirates ID. All things can be checked much easily for him. That's okay. why. 
Okay. So for a non-resident, it takes about a month to a month and a half. Because the bank needs to right. understand why is he investing here? What's his overall profile? Right. Should they open his account or not? Right. That's why. Okay. 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 And this, uh, you said these mortgages uh, are only available to individuals or also is it for companies? There are few banks who do on the company name as well. People okay. form Jabza offshore companies or yes. BVI offshore companies. They can buy assets under that company name, which are primarily formed for a property management thought process. They right. buy 10 units, 5 units. Yes. Loans are not that easy because not every bank is comfortable doing a loan okay. when the asset is taken under the company name. But there are banks who work on it as well. So okay. it's case to case basis. They can be worked on. Okay. But it's not a normal uh, trend. Practice, yeah. It's not a normal practice. practice yeah. So most of the times people buy properties on individual Individually, names, yeah. Right? Because there's no taxation. Right. I guess that's one of the reasons people are more comfortable right. buying it individually. Okay. But say if I'm taking a loan on my personal name, yeah. okay, but I want to have a joint... Uh, owner of say my brother or sister or wife or you know family member as a co-owner on that property is that possible immediate blood relationship can be done let's say your wife could be your son if he's about 21 years of age right. your sister your brother okay. or your parents can okay. be done that can be done but if if the say for example uh, you know someone's buying a property in their name and wants to put their kids who are below 21 that is not possible they can buy the asset but the financing is difficult okay there are and legal repercussions when you, you know, give a loan where a minor is also an owner of a property. That's right. why. Okay. So yeah. that is something which does not happen. Yeah. I mean, talking about now, you know, right now due to, you know, inflation and the interest rates globally are going very high. Correct. What are the interest rates you're seeing right now in Dubai in general? Right now, the range what people are borrowing at is around 4.69% to around 6%. There's right. a range. If a resident is taking a loan, yes. it's at 4.75 odd percent. Non-resident takes it at five and a half. Right. So there's a difference between a non-resident and resident rate. But people are still borrowing. The sales have not dropped. You know, last right. one year, interest rate have doubled up. Yes. But there is no, you could say a negative impact or less supply in people applying for loans. Right. People are still borrowing. Still borrowing. Because they understand that the appreciation on the property, yeah. it is still at a higher pace than the rate the interest rate is increasing. Exactly. That's why. Exactly. And still, even with the higher rents, even if they're buying as an investment, they're able to manage it. The rent yeah. can still cover up the bank EMIs. Correct. correct. Right. Right. I mean, also, uh, can people get, uh, you know, can borrow money from the bank based yeah. on the property if they are looking at upgrading their properties? Because what is happening, a lot of, uh, you know, people, they have properties and those properties are old, you know, certain older communities such as Meadows or if you see some older villas, older villas in the Palm Jumeirah. Does the bank even fund uh, if they want to upgrade the property or, you know, uh, refurbish the property. That's a quite normal practice right now with high-end villas. People right. who have properties like Jumeirah Island, Gulf Estate have old properties. Yes. They have taken them, they are staying in them. They get it upgraded. They get a top-up on their existing loan. Okay. So the bank releases equity against a quotation given by them wherein they either get a pool done yes. or landscaping or further cosmetic or additional modifications. Get them right. done. It can be done. Top up but can is, be done. There, is there a percentage uh, what the bank will fund? It purely depends. They will not cross the LTV parameter. So let's say okay. if the property price is 10 million, okay. the loan which the bank will give will not cross 7 million. So if his existing right. loan was 5, they could give him 2 million, 2 more, million more for the upgrades. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, and what about uh, mortgage and financing for people who want to buy land and build their own villa? They do that financing as well. So bank will fund the land and construction cost both or only both, the land both of that they do both for the purchase of land as well right and for the construction cost only thing is this product is majorly given for residents because they want people who are based here right. because they can monitor that okay someone who's a non-resident it becomes difficult for difficult. them to track and follow up the construction model okay. that's so right. if it's a resident who's living in the uae can easily get uh, mortgage to finance. buy land and construction as well can be Both. done and yeah. what is the percentage on that is the same 80% or while buying the plot they finance 50% okay when they are doing construction depending on the cost of construction bank does 100% as well okay so there is a possibility the bank can give 100% as well correct right right okay now I mean uh, a lot of people are buying properties taking golden visas okay or becoming new residents and uh, they want to take new mortgage uh, you know mortgage uh, for another properties how does that process work? I mean, if it's if it, if if a new resident, uh, someone who becomes a resident, uh, you know, uh, say today, uh, right? Uh, does the bank give 
you know a loan immediately or does the bank wait for some time what so is the criteria it, on that? it all depends on the client profile if someone is high net worth back home as well right. where is he having a successful running business in his home country they can still look at it so it's okay. on case to case basis okay generally when they give a loan to people they need to have a continuity in their income in the country right so at least 6 months in the country where he has an income we can try to get him the loan okay so if he is a new resident he needs to have some income over here at least uh, for the ball to start rolling exactly. where he can repay the loan That's but what if way. someone comes in and establishes a new business and becomes a resident we then can, in that case what happens we can still take his income back home and try to structure it with the bank it okay. all depends on his profile you know okay. if he's a high net worth individual i'm sure he would have multiple sources of income back home as right. well no but for someone let's assume that someone's a startup uh, does a new business or it's uh, you know has started uh, you know was on a job before moved over here started a new business in that case is there a timeline at least 6 months okay because there has to be some certain recurring business that he is doing in his business right. to say that he can repay the loan right. because you know, the bank's objective is that if they lend money yeah. the client should be able to pay on time right yeah okay. the asset is just the backdrop that right. they are lending more comfortably to him right but okay and do you know like for example in the uk and the us there's you know this uh, uh, trend where people take uh, you know two mortgages on one property like a second charge does that also happen in dubai at the moment it doesn't happen it's right. the first degree mortgage that's counted okay. there are people who are doing corporate lending let's say for a factory or a warehouse right. in those cases there are two three banks who have contributed and given him a limit to construct that warehouse or a factory those cases they can have one degree mortgage and a second degree mortgage but not in a normal not in residential, a normal residential yeah. cases that doesn't happen yeah. and how does how does uh, one go about that if a person already has a property right and if he wants to buy another property and take a mortgage right uh, can he take a mortgage on his uh, existing property if it's a fully paid up property yeah. he could get a mortgage against that yes. use the top up amount or the amount from the loan proceeds and buy an off plan or a ready property ready that property. can be done but what is the percentage would a bank give say if a property is worth say 5 million dirhams right and it's a fully paid ready property Uh, what percentage does the bank the same parameters they could give him up to 80% depending on his eligibility okay so it if all depends on that okay if he's eligible uh, as per his financials the bank will give him uh, this maximum thing. loan to maximum value is possible loan. okay okay but do do mortgages also work for off plan properties at the moment it is still under discussion all banks are still reviewing because right. they need to understand when they see the handover notice they are yes. more comfortable right because that's when the developer needs the payment if you are a buyer till the time your developer is not telling you do me the final payment yes. why would you need a mortgage as well right no but some you know because uh, some people come and say that you know why can't we get a you know uh, mortgage on an off land property because in some other countries this does happen right where banks do uh, get involved at a much earlier stage but does that even work over here it happens you could say for the major developers on okay. a case to case basis okay but it's not a very common thing it's not a very thing. common thing because those ticket sizes are very small so if you look right. at a bank's perspective they would make more money if they do a 2 million loan or a 1 million loan right. versus a 200000 tranche payment done for off plan okay okay so it's but a handover payment can be easily funded uh, when the hand but in this case if yeah. someone buys an off plan property uh, say he has a payment plan of say 70 30 he okay. has paid 70% and now 30% is due for uh, on handover correct if he was to buy a ready property probably in the same building then he would only put 20% down payment correct but in this case if someone has bought off plan is it possible that once the property is ready he can take the money out yes once initially the bank will give him 30% get right. him the handover of the unit a title deed is issued under yes. his name mortgage with the bank post that he can take a top up on that mortgage it's possible so he can get the balance equity out Correct. and use it up for whatever purpose up to the eligible uh, ltv parameters that he is approved for okay. 80% or 70% 80% okay that's okay. possible that is possible yeah, yeah. okay that's it what what would you see uh, you know uh, because you must be working with a lot of clients who come for mortgages yeah uh, what is the main reason for people's mortgage to get Uh, rejected apart the eligibility criteria like what do you see like mistakes which people make where you know if they didn't do that financially or uh, you know uh, kept certain things in certain ways i'll tell you majorly people make a mistake in managing their finances with respect to the aecb report okay aecb report is al ihtiyat credit report that's quite critical in this part of the world because that evaluates how you've been paying people on time okay 
Are you paying your utility bills on time? Are you paying your existing credit card bills on time? Your existing auto loan, personal loan, mortgage installments on time? Because that shows your habit or your trend that you've been a good paymaster. Got it. So if you pay well people on time, then the banks are comfortable. Right. If there are people who have ignored their utility bills, let's yeah. say, that creates a wrong impression because the bank feels if he didn't honor a small payment of, let's say, 200 on his utility bill, right. why would he honor us on time for our monthly installments? So okay. So even your utility bills, if you don't Should pay on time, actually affects taking a mortgage. A small bill of 100 shows that you're lazy or lethargic in paying to the okay. provider. Right. So this is something which a lot of people don't know about. They, they take it lightly at times. They just yes. give an excuse that, sorry, I was traveling. But you have a facility given where yeah, you, you can you just do it online. pay on time. Yes. Yeah. Plus, okay. check returns. This is right. the second thing which could impact people. Right. At times, they are careless when they don't have funds in their account and yeah. they have given a check to their landlord or to any other suppliers yeah. or people like that. That return impacts them because shows that they are not serious where they have given an instrument of honoring the payment on time. Okay. That also impacts the score. And talking about credit scores, what is, is there a minimum credit score you require to go in for a mortgage? Every bank has a different outlook because okay. there are 10 There's banks no lending standard, money. There's uh, no standard, this thing. It's, it's a bank's call where, how do you put it across to them on the justification that this right. individual was actually held up for a certain reason that he didn't pay the mortgage. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, Amit, tell me something. When someone wants to come and take a mortgage, right? Now, yes. you of, obviously, I know a lot of my clients, uh, we, you know, always refer to you. Yeah. And uh, they've been really happy with your service. But uh, for people, uh, you know, watching this or listening to this, how does your, uh, you know, as a, as a mortgage advisor, uh, how does the whole process work? What are the fees involved, costs involved in taking a mortgage? See, generally, a mortgage, there are basic fees involved, which is called a processing fee, which right. the bank charges. There is a valuation fees with the bank charges. And at the end of the transaction, there is mortgage registration, life insurance and property insurance, which are charged to the client. Okay. So whenever we meet a new client, we share with them multiple proposals of the top three, four banks for them to analyze that these are the three, four options available for them. And then we suggest which suits their requirement okay. because every client would be in a different income profile or an industry where he would be suitable with a certain bank or a bank proposition. Okay. So our core job is to advise them on the right bank, get the pre-approval done, yeah. post they finalize the property, get a final offer letter. Till the day the transfer is completed, we are there with them yes. just to provide end-to-end -end assistance. Okay. That's but what, what But why why does the bank, I mean, I, can, I understand the processing fees and valuation fees. Why is there a life insurance attached to a mortgage? The core reason being that today, if I take a mortgage under my name, yes. God forbid anything happens to me, yes. the life insurance company would settle the mortgage with the bank okay. and my legal hires, could yeah. be my family or my nominees, get the access to the property. So basically, that's to cover in the bank's case, risk. The bank's risk, and right? After me, maybe my family is not able to repay that to loan repay or that, that installment. Loan. Yes, that's why. Okay, so basically, in that case, the bank is covered, and the property becomes debt-free for the family. Right. And this life right. insurance is very normal. It's like a right. term insurance. Whenever you settle the mortgage, sell yes. the property, it gets right. cancelled. Okay. Talking about mortgage settlements, yeah. right? If people want to prepay, pre, uh, you know, pay early, what is the general trend or norm or uh, the law? that if they want to make a prepayment, uh, what does the bank charge? Every bank has a different slab available. There is a bank which offers 15% each year outstanding without right. penalty. Another bank does 20, another bank does 25. So it's as per every bank's proposition of making revenue on the balance payment that right. they're getting back. Okay. Plus, the whole idea is people take a loan for 25 years and they themselves target that they want to run the loan in 10 years and finish it off. Okay. Because no one wants to drag a liability at a later stage of their life. True. So that's how people plan it. No, but then what is the maximum penalty if, say, someone takes a loan and wants to go and foreclose maybe after one year, two years, whatever? It's 1% right? or 10,000, whichever is lower. And that's a law or a That's no a standard uh, For guideline. every bank? All the banks. Follow okay. It. So 1% or 10,000, whichever is lower. Lower. Okay. The idea is they want to, you know, keep people taking loans and settling mm. because then people will hesitate to sell their house. Right. If this penalty is on a higher side, people who have bought, right. even if they're making a profit on the house, they don't want to sell right. it because of the penalty. Okay. So that's okay. why it's kept on a lower side. Okay. I mean, talking, uh, you know, uh, there's also something which a lot of people do uh, in, 
you know, across the world is if they have a property portfolio, which is already rented okay. and they're getting uh, rent out of it. So they discount the lease, you know, the lease rental discounting. Does that also happen in uh, UAE? And how does it work? That happens, but that majorly happens for people who have multiple properties, let's say more than 10 units okay. or people have complete buildings. That's okay. done. That's so say done. if an investor has a full building and the whole building is rented, Correct. right? Uh, the, the He can go and discount the... Rent. The, the bank would look at his rental income, okay. deduct the maintenance fees that he's paying annually right. for that building and then get him a loan. Either they could give him cash in his account or those proceeds can be used to buy another property for property from Can him. be done. Okay. Okay. And is there a restriction on how, you know, that uh, how many properties you can buy on mortgage? In there's, the, there's, no restriction. there's no restriction. There's no restriction. As far as you qualify your You're eligible. Records, eligible. You have an income to support the repayment. Yes. Banks don't have a concern. Banks don't have a concern on that. Yeah. Okay. The only the thing is the first property you get more and the second is That's it. lesser. Okay. Is, does this also apply to a non-resident? Uh, but the first property, more mortgage and... 60. He could the have max. 10 houses. 60 is the maximum. 60 is the maximum. Up they to 60. Get. Depending to 60. on his eligibility. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And the, how how does the whole process work? Say if someone had a mortgage, okay. has already paid off the mortgage. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> And now he wants to, you know, get the charge out. Is it simple? Is it complicated? You just walk into the trustee office, yeah. get a release letter from the bank. On basis of that release letter, they will issue, they will charge him 1650 as a mortgage release right. fees, issue a new title deed and hand it over to him. So it happens it's, instantly and it, on the spot. It could take maximum one hour's time. You can okay. sit there and so it's a very it. simple process Easy to process. get done. Right. Okay. And does, the, are you seeing a lot of loan buyouts happening? At the moment, because there are people who were on a variable rate, right. which is gone up to, let's say, 6% or 7% versus people who want to move to a fixed rate of 5% where they want to cap their installments because the income is not increased. Right. You know, I would have borrowed three years back. My income was X. Right now, also my income is X. But I can't pay a higher premium just because interest rates have increased. So I would pay a small fee of shifting the loan yes. and then get it moved to a fixed rate for the next three years. Okay. Now, uh, talking about interest rates... Yeah. What is what is good? Like because you see, uh, there's fixed rates, variable rates. From 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 an end user point of view, uh, f- whether he's buying one property to stay or to rent it out, what is financially beneficial for someone? Like you preferably, know, <laughs> it would be a fixed rate. Okay. Because then you know that next three years or two years or five years, your installment doesn't fluctuate, and you can plan things. Right. In a variable rate. It, there is a fluctuation happening every three months or every one month. Right. So client is more open to fluctuation. That's the only risk. But, you know, as we have hundred kinds of people, everyone yes. has a different thought process. True. Few people project that Ibor would come down in six months. So they want to go for a variable product. Right. So it's an individual choice. Okay. We, we show both the options to the client and wherever he fits the bill, we give it to him. So when you say a variable rate, yeah. how does a variable rate work? Means how does the bank calculate the variable rate? The bank is offering a fixed margin. Let's say there is a bank who's offering a fixed margin of 0.99% as of today. Yes. Plus a three months EBOR. Okay. So which means that every three months, the installment as per the fluctuation in the three months EBOR will change Okay. for the client. So let's say in the first three months, his installment is 6,000. If the EBOR increases, the next three months EMI could become 7,000. Okay. If the eyebore goes down, it could be five and a half as well. Okay. So that's a chance which the client takes okay. on his thought process. On his, okay. Yeah. So that's the thing. But usually... Uh, a fixed is a fixed preferable is because preferable then rate. every three months you don't need to look how much look is how gone much from is your account. EMI. You yes. know you that... plan next, financially better. Correct. You know, even if it's a property for investment, you know, okay. Irrelevant you know, of the is, reason. You know, you know, yeah. Because then you have even to... Even as an end user, it's better to know that what is going, your outgoing... Because Correct. then it can just change drastically. Correct. And where do you see the interest rates going? Like right now, everybody has been like, you know, interest rates have gone up so I, high. I think it will stay at the same range for the next six to eight right. months. Maybe 12 months down the line, then they will start on a lower side. Okay. Start coming So down. anybody taking a mortgage right now, definitely a fixed rate is definitely. the best thing. That's the right. best advisable option. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, tell me now, when people want to take a mortgage, right? Especially when they come in the market, uh, you know, banks uh, always, uh, they don't give the loan instantly. They do a pre-approval, right? Correct. How does the pre-approval process work and how much time does it take? 
and uh, what does the does the client have to spend money for getting a pre approval or what is it in the current scenario most of the banks are doing pre approval without any cost okay. and the benefit is as a end user i get a letter from the bank confirming my eligibility True. so then i can go and shop accordingly yes. and plus i can <coughs> finance and manage my budget so if yes. i let's say i get a pre approval for 2 million i know that i could buy a property of 2.5 where that 2 million loan will be given half yes. a million would be my down payment exactly plus it helps me in negotiating because Absolutely. if i go yes. for a viewing yes if there is a pre approval in hand it makes it much easier correct. to show the seller because then he understand that i will not be negotiating and not turning back and giving yes. a final offer the person is serious correct okay but how much time does this pre approval last like say if someone gets a pre approval today is there a timeline or is that that pre approval 60 is... calendar days as of today okay so for 2 months that pre approval is valid mm-hmm. before that a person needs to finalize on a property correct even not, if it expires we can yeah. revalidate it again that's okay. okay but not like you know uh, he he doesn't need to uh, uh, like close the l- transaction in 2 months but he can he has 2 months to actually go out and shop and look for a property correct right that's and this same applies for a non resident as well yes 2 months okay okay and once he signs and once say a person signs an mou and does everything uh typically how much time does a person need to factor in to get a final loan from the bank generally when you're buying if the seller doesn't have a loan the yes. normal timeline is a month's time for a resident client yeah. in case if the seller has a loan then you have to add more 15 days because initially your bank will settle the seller's loan okay. so people generally tend to keep an mou for 60 days right. and target to end the transaction in 45 days right and that is also probably one of the most complex uh, ways when there are two banks involved because but it's more regulated here right. so banks keep on engaging themselves right. they don't trouble the buyer or seller okay okay they do it themselves. but they need to keep, factor in 15 20 days more yeah. than a normal case because you need to give time to that bank to retrieve the old title deed right. or issue the clearance documents right. yeah okay and what are the fees a person needs to keep in mind to register a mortgage there's a mortgage registration fee which is 0.25 of your loan amount so whatever is the amount you are borrowing from the bank right. dld charges a mortgage registration on that amount 0.25% 0.25% okay so if it's a more if it's a loan of 1 million then 2500 is the mortgage fee plus there is a trustee fee which charges when you're executing the transaction yes. that's 4200 yes and they charge a knowledge fee that's, and a title deed that's the normal fee. fees which any which way a person would pay correct okay Okay Amit I think this was really great that was a lot of information from you thanks a lot for coming and joining us on this episode uh, if people want to get in touch with you with more questions regarding mortgages where can they uh, contact they you they can reach out to me at line mortgage or i can give my email address which is amit.nenani at line mortgage.ae okay so i'm going to put that in the description below so thank you so much for joining thank us you, and that was really great to having you on the show thank, thank you. you so much thank you.